Hello teachers, we are back again. Um, my name is Jessica Ellison, teacher educator at the Minnesota Historical Society, and I'm here with Ami Naff, who's an exhibits researcher at MNHS. And we're here to bring another amazing woman to light um, who was involved on many levels of issues affecting her and her community. So Ami, who are we talking about today? Yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Marie Botno Baldwin. Um, she was born in Pembina, a town on her ancestral homelands of the, along the current um, North Dakota and Minnesota border. She was a member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians, and she lived in the Twin Cities, where she clerked in a Minneapolis law firm established by her father, J.B. Botno. The firm mostly handled cases on behalf of Ojibwe people in Minnesota and North Dakota. And in the early 1890s, Baldwin moved to Washington, D.C. to fight for treaty rights for Native Americans. President Ro Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, appointed her a clerk of the Office of Indian Affairs. And when Baldwin earned a degree from the Washington College of Law in 1912, she was the school's first woman of color and indigenous woman to graduate. She helped establish national alliances and networks of Native people as an officer of the Society of American Indians. Um, Baldwin's life work really demonstrates the multifaceted concerns of Native women. So as they were seeking ways to support their communities, treaty rights and tribal sovereignty often edged out voting rights for women. But Baldwin did support the suffrage movement she participated with other lawyers in the 1913 suffrage parade in DC, and she was among a group of suffrage leaders who met with President Woodrow Wilson to enlist his support. Um, once when she was asked by a reporter if she was a suffrage, suffragist, uh, Baldwin responded, did you know that the Indian women were among the first suffragists and that they exercised the right of recall? The trouble in this Indian question, which I meet again and again, is that it is not the Indian who needs to be educated so constantly up to the white man, but that the white man needs to be educated up to the Indian. That is an excellent quote. And I think that says so much about Marie Baldwin and about other Native women of her time. And I loved how you talked about the multifaceted nature of the issues affecting indigenous women um, that yes, they were fighting for suffrage, but also for a number of other issues such as sovereignty and treaty rights. And so I think this is a really great opportunity to bring in the strong character from the past to talk about native agency. Because a lot of times when we talk about native people uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century, what we're talking about is their reaction to federal Indian policy. Mm -hmm. But Marie Baldwin is such an incredible voice for Native agency and resilience to show how women like her and other people in Indigenous communities were continually fighting for their rights. Yeah. So what a great local person to bring into that story and really deepen the conversation. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Ami. This has been great. And for more information about women from Minnesota who fought for voting rights, you can visit the Votes for Women website at mnhs.org. Thank you so much. Thank you.